السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما هذه الحياة الدنيا إلا له ولعب وإن الدار الآخرة لهي الحيوان لو كانوا يعلمون صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم منفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وأزواجه وذرياته We are passing through the month of Muharram, which is the first month of the Islamic calendar. Muharram, Safar, Rabiul Awwal, Rabiul Akhir. جمادي الأول جمادي الآخر رجب شعبان رمضان شوال ذو الحجة ذو القعدة عن ذو الحجة شوال ذو القعدة عن ذو الحجة so, ذو الحجة is the last month of the Muslim calendar which has just ended a few days ago and Muharram is the first month of the Muslim calendar and uh, every year we witness this Zul Hijjah is gone and Muharram has begun or rather the last year is gone and new year has begun The 
this happens in January also and this happens in Muharram also every year. The last year is gone and new year has begun. The last year is gone and new year has begun. Upon the signing of the crescent moon of the first of Muharram, we say that last year is gone and the new year has begun. Every year we say this. And uh, at midnight on 31st of December we say last year is gone and new year has begun. And the same thing happens every month also. Whenever a new month begins, whether it is according to the Islamic calendar or according to the Gregorian calendar, the lunar calendar or the solar calendar, we say that the last month is gone and the new month has begun. And uh, this happens on a daily basis also. From the Islamic perspective, when we hear the Maghrib Adhan, when the sun sets and the Maghrib Adhan is called out, we are able to say that yesterday is gone. That means today has become yesterday now. The last day is gone and the new day has begun. And from the other perspective, daily at 12 o'clock, daily, 12 o'clock at night, we are able to say the last day is gone and the, the new day has begun. And we can say the same for every hour. At 1 o'clock we are able to say the last hour is gone and the new hour has begun. And we can say the same for every minute as well. If we look at the seconds ticking away, and when the seconds reach 60, we can say that the, the last minute is gone and the new minute has begun. These are all signs or warnings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that anything that comes in this world comes to go. Nothing remains forever in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu man alayha faan. Every person on the surface of this earth will perish. So every human will perish. Kullu man alayha faan. Faan. Wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram. And only your Rabb will remain forever. Allah has always been there. Allah will always remain. Everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come into existence at a later date. Nobody has been there all the time. And once it comes to existence, it does not remain forever and ever. Kullu nafsin dhaiqatul maut. Every soul will have to taste death. Innal mawtal ladhi tafirruna minhu. Indeed, 
the death that you run away from. We all run away from death. We all try to save ourselves from dying. And there is nothing wrong with it as long as we do it whilst remaining in Shari limits. If we become ill, we try to cure ourselves. If somebody is drowning, he will try to save himself. He will call for help, 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 help. If somebody is trapped in a building which catches fire, he will ask for help. There is nothing wrong. As long as we do things remaining within Shari'i limits. But it is human nature to try to run away from death. To try to save his or herself from death. But for every person and for everything, whether living or non-living, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fixed a time when that thing will perish, it will remain no more. A tree will not remain forever and ever. A stone will not remain forever and ever. A human, an animal will not remain forever and ever. The skies will not remain forever and ever. The oceans will not remain forever and ever. Certain things perish more quickly here than other things. But there is an end for everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Qul say, O my messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, innal mawta alladhi tafirruna minhu, indeed the death that you are running away from. فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاكِكُمْ The death itself will meet you. At its appointed time. Every person will perish, everything will perish. مَعِنْدَكُمْ يَنْفَدْ Whatever you possess will perish sooner or later. We have to embed this reality in our hearts and minds, my friends. My sisters, my daughters, my brothers, my elders. That we have not come into this world to live forever and ever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا جِعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدِ We have not decreed for any human to live for eternity. Even the angels will perish. Even their lives will come to an end. Everybody will die. And after death, people will be resurrected again. إِنَّكَ مَيِّتُونَ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even you will die. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam passed away, some people had doubts regarding the passing away of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That maybe his soul has gone to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the soul will return. And he will come to live again. So he has not passed away yet. He has not departed yet. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu 
who is the best in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or who is the best amongst the humans after the Anbiya alayhi musalatu wassalam he was very knowledgeable and he was the closest companion of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When he arrived at the scene, he said, Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad maat. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has died. He did not say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has departed or passed away. He did not leave any vagueness. He said Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has died. Death has overpowered him also. He has left this world for good. We have become neglectful. And because we have become neglectful, we do not ponder over the things that happen to us and around us on a daily basis and derive lessons. We do not do that. Yes, we ponder over things and derive lessons in regard to our worldly lives, worldly pursuits, worldly success. But we don't do that in regard to the life hereafter. We don't do that in regard to our deen. How can I progress in my deen? The minute that started 60 seconds ago has come to an end. And the hour that 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 started 60 minutes ago has come to an end. And the day that started 24 hours ago has come to an end. And the month that started 30 days ago, 31 days ago, or according to the Islamic calendar, 30 days or 29 days ago has come to an end. And the year that started 12 months ago has come to an end. We should take lesson from these incidents that occur on a regular basis and, and, and understand that the life that began 15 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 years ago, will also come to an end. Adi radhi Allah ta'ala says, Irtahalati dunya mudbiratan, vartahalati al-akhiratu mukbilatan. This world is Slowly, slowly going away from us with its back turned towards us. This dunya. Dunya is going with its back turned towards us. So if there are two people, if I am sitting here and somebody enters through the door and his face is towards me and he's walking towards me and there is another person who gets up from the second or the third row and he starts walking towards the door. So a person's front is towards me and another person's back is towards me. Both of them are walking. The one whose front is towards me will get closer on every step. And the person whose back is towards me will go further and further away from me on every step. So Ali Radhi Allah says, that the world is going, the world is moving, and the akhirat is also moving. But the world is moving with its back turned towards us, and the akhirat is moving with its front towards us. So the world is getting further and further away from us, and the akhirat is getting closer and closer to us. And soon what will happen is, that we would have left this world, and we would have entered the hereafter. We need to realize and accept this reality. That the reality is we will not live in this this world forever and ever. And 
all those things that we are enjoying at the moment will not stay in this world forever and ever. Either we will separate from those things or those very things will separate from us even before we depart from this world. And after we depart from this world, the reality, the another reality that we have to accept is that we will be resurrected again on the day of Qiyamah. We will have to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. And before facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will have to face the angels in the grave who will question us, who will test our faith, our deen, our iman. They will ask us a question regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regarding our religion and regarding our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mar Rabbu ka, who is your Rabb? Ma Deenu ka, what is your religion? Ma Taqulu fi hadar rajul. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be shown to us through the kudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our graves. We will be able to see Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will be asked, what is your opinion regarding this person? Who is this person? Those people who would have valued their lives in this world and who would have obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who would have abstained from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the answers correctly and very quickly. Marrabbuka, who is your Rabb? Rabbi Allah. My Rabbi is Allah. Ma dinoka, what is your religion? Deen is Islam. My religion is Islam. Ma taqulu fi hadar rajul. What do you say regarding this person? Muhammadur Rasulullah. He is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah. And thereafter, this person will be given glad tidings and he will go to sleep peacefully. And he will remain in peace until he is resurrected on the day of Qiyamah. Then we will be made to stand in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also ask five questions. <coughs> Allah will reckon us for five things. لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن خمس The feet of any servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be able to move from their places on the day of Qiyamah until he or she is asked five questions. And umurihi fi ma'afna. Where did you spend your entire life? From the time you reached puberty until you breathed your last, where did you spend your life? One shababihi fi ma'abala. And thereafter, specific question regarding the phase of youth. Where did you spend your youth? Where? How? How did you spend your entire life? In what pursuits did you spend your entire life? In obedience to Allah or in disobedience to Allah? Thereafter, how did you spend your youth? In obedience to Allah, in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One malihi min aina iktasabahu. Where did you earn your wealth from? From Halal avenues, haram avenues, where did you earn your wealth from? Wafima and Fatahu. And where did you use this wealth of yours? In halal activities, haram activities. Did you spend your wealth in those things which Brought the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
وَعَمَّا عَمِيلَ فِيمَا عَلِيمَ And the knowledge that you had acquired, which was compulsory for you to acquire, how much did you practice upon that knowledge? And after this interrogation, after this examination, after this reckoning, after this questioning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decide the fate of his servant. Either he or she will be sentenced to the fire of Jahannam or he or she will be given glad tidings of Jannah. Those people who will be given glad tidings of Jannah will be handed their book of deeds in their right hands. And those who will be sentenced to the fire of Jahannam will be given their book of deeds in their left hands. This will be the sign. For all the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who will receive their book of deeds in their right hands will immediately know that I am going in Jannah. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا The person who will be given his right hand, his, his book of deeds in his right hands, he will return after the reckoning to his associates, his friends, his family members in a happy state. And he will say, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِ فَيَقُولُ هَاو مُقْرَوْ كِتَابِيَ Read my book of deed. I have been given my book of deed in my, in, in my right hand. I have been given my book of deeds in my right hand. Read, read the contents of my book of deeds. And why have I been given my book of deeds in my right hands? Inni dhanantu anni mulakin hisabiya. Because whilst I was in the world, I believed. And I always remembered that a day is going to come when I will have to face the day of reckoning. And Allah will reckon me. This saved me today. I did not become neglectful in the world. It was my belief. And it was not only belief. We, we also believe that a day, that, that a day is going to come where we will be reckoned for everything we have done in this world. But we forget, we forget this reality. Those people who will be given their book of deeds in their right hands are those people who believed and after believing they remembered at all times that a day is going to come when I will have to face my reckoning. فَهُوَ فِي إِيشَةِ الرَّاضِيَةِ Such people will experience a pleasant life in Jannah. فِي جَنَّةِ عَالِيَةِ In Jannah of a very high status. And uh, when a person will be given his book of deeds in his left hand, he will immediately understand that I am guilty, I, I am doomed to the fire of Jahannam. So he will say, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ He will say, I wish I was not given my book of deeds. So my friends, Zul Hijjah has gone and Muharram has not only come, it has, a few days of Muharram has already passed. We need to contemplate 
that in another year of my my life has gone. Every year we need to contemplate another year of my life has gone. People celebrate birthdays. What is there to celebrate when we have spent the whole year disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When, when we have spent the whole year doing those things that will land us in the fire of Jahannam. When we have spent the whole year doing those things which will make us deserving of the punishment in, in the grave. What is there to celebrate? On that, on the date that we were born, we should reflect, reflect that another year of my precious life has gone. Another precious year of my precious life has gone. Life is a commodity, like money. If you go go for a holiday, if you go for a holiday to France or if you go for a holiday to Dubai, if you go for a holiday locally and uh, if we have 500 pounds in our pocket and if we spend 100 pounds, we go to the shop, we spend 100 pounds and we return and we count our money and we realize that before I left my villa, I had 500 pounds and when I have returned, I have only 400 pounds. If Will a person arrange a party and celebrate? Celebrate the loss of 100 pounds? <coughs> he will feel grieved. Maybe grief of a very, very lesser degree, but he will not become happy. He will feel grieved. That I have only got 400 pounds now. And I, I still have another seven days to go. And as he continues spending, his grief will increase inside. I only have 50 pounds now. I only have 10 pounds now. I only have five. I had, I wish I had more money. This should be our behavior on the date we were born. I have lost another year. For example, this coming November, According to the Gregorian calendar, I will be 60. So in November, this is how I should feel. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for me to live in this world for say 70 years, then last year I had 11 years, now I have only 10 years. If Allah has decreed only 61 years for me, Then last year I had two more years left. Now I have only one year. One more year. And every person does not live until the age of 70. So we are all in the same boat. If if a person like me who has reached the age of 60 can worry, can feel worried that what if Allah has decreed for me to leave this world at the age of 61? That means I have only one more year left. A person who is 18 years old, he can think in the same way. Because he, he doesn't know. He Maybe Allah has decreed only 19 years for him. So whether young or old, we are same. Who knows? I am 60 and I may still have another good 10 years. And somebody who is 18, 19, who is sitting in front of me may only have two more years left. You could be in more danger than me. A young person could be in more danger than, than an old man. We have to remember death frequently. We have to make ourselves believe that number one, my life is going to end one day. Number two, it could be sooner than I am assuming. It could be much more sooner than I am assuming. It could be much more sooner than I am accepting. There are so many people who are in their 20s and who are in their teens and who are in their 30s and 40s and who are given this news that you are suffering from a life-threatening illness. And some of them are given this news that you only have two more weeks to go. You only have a few more months to go. And 
those people who have not spent their lives well, even when they are told it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah is warning this person through the doctors that you only have two more months left, you have only six months left. That means start preparing. But because such people who have not spent their lives according to the wishes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not prepared for the life hereafter, they become depressed when they think about what will happen to them in the grave, when they think about what will happen to them when they face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they feel that their backs are broken now. They don't have the courage and the himmat to do anything. But those people who have lived their lives according to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have some hope that no Allah will forgive me. Allah will accept something from me. And Allah gives them this courage because they have been obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout their lives that they pull themselves together and Allah gives them the, the tawfiq to think in this manner that I still have six more months left, I still have two more months left I should make the most out of these precious moments of life that I have and I should try to acquire the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His forgiveness. So number one, it is a reality that I will definitely die one day. We all believe this. But the second point, I may die any time. I may not see the next new year. I may not see my next birthday. I may not see Fajr Salat. I may not see, I may not witness the Isha Salat. So one day I have to die. And it may be more sooner than I am assuming or expecting. And number three, after I die, everything is not over. Abhi to ghabra ke ye kehte hai ke mar jayenge. مر کے بھی چین نہ پایا تو کدھر جائیں گے when facing difficulties a person experiences experiences anxiety he says to himself that sooner or later I will die and once I die all the problems will be over ابھی تو گھبرا کے یہ کہتے ہیں کہ مر جائیں گے the poet asks if after death you are faced with the problems of the hereafter, then where will you go? Because in the hereafter there is no death. So let us repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right now, right now, let us connect our hearts and minds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah, I am repenting for all the last years that I have spent in your disobedience. I am making a firm resolution that I will spend this coming year in doing good. And thereafter the rest of my life doing good. O oh Allah, accept my tawbah. And then try to learn deen. Sit in the company of the ulama, mashayikh. Take part in those activities which bring this realization that it is the hereafter that is important, not this world. There is Jannah to come, there is Jahannam to come, there is grave to come, there is death to come. Associate yourselves with the Mashaikh and try to find solutions to your spiritual problems. And try your utmost to tread a Righteous life. A life full of piety. Make this resolution. And whilst making this resolution, practically value the month of Muharram. Because the month of Muharram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make a, a, a good start has made it very virtuous. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said, that the most beloved fasts 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the fasts of the month of Ramadan are the fasts of the days of the month of Muharram. Except for five days, the day of Eid al-Fitr, the Eid after Ramadan, and the day of Eid al-Adha, and three days that follow Eid al-Adha, except for these five days, a person is able to fast whenever he desires. Optional fasts, he can fast whenever he desires. From amongst all the fasts, the most virtuous fasts are the fasts of the month of Muharram. And after the month of Muharram, the most virtuous fasts are the fasts of the the most virtuous fast are the fast of the month of Ramadan. And after the fast of the month of Ramadan, the most virtuous fasts are the fasts of the month of Muharram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, regarding the month of Muharram, that in the hadith he says, that after the fasts of the month of Ramadan, the most virtuous fasts are the fasts of the days of Allah's Muharram. Allah's Muharram. This month is Allah's. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam used to eagerly wait for the month of Ramadan. Ibn Abbas razi Allah says, I did not see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam eagerly await the fast of any day which he gave preference to over other days except the day of Ashura. So in first is that the whole month of the whole month of Muharram if a person is able to fast all 30 days Alhamdulillah if not then try to fast as many as possible. We are going through the summer period and in, in, in summer it is difficult, long days and it's very hot as well. But try to fast as many days as possible and uh, thereafter, thereafter try to make sure that you fast on the 10th day of Muharram. It is called the day of Ashura, the 10th day of Muharram. So one thing we need to do is to try to fast as many days as possible from the month of Muharram. As many days as possible. And none should become neglectful on the day of Ashura. And it was the desire of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that with the day of Ashura we fast either the 9th or the 11th. So we fast 9th and 10th of Muharram or 10th and 11th of Muharram. If a person fasts only the day of Ashura, then it is makruhe tanzihi. His reward will be reduced. He will not become sinful. So if somebody is weak and unable to fast both days, if he will fast only on the day of Ashura, it will suffice. But it is better to fast on the 9th and the 10th or 10th and the 11th. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed the sahaba Rizwanullah ta'ala ali majmain to do that. So let us begin this new year with a very firm resolve that inshallah we will never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the year. If we sleep we will repent immediately and uh, in order to progress in deen, we will try our utmost to sit in the company of the ulama, sit in the company of the mashayikh, take part in those movements, those activities, which make us realize that it is the life here, hereafter that is the most important and not this worldly life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfi. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa lil muttaqeen. والصلاة والسلام على رسوله سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا اغفر لنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم 
يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم احفظنا من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الاخره اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها انت خير من زكاها انت وليها ومولاها اللهم اصلح لنا شاننا كله اللهم اصلح لنا شاننا كله اللهم اصلح لنا شاننا كله اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا اللهم انا نسالك حسن الختام والعفو عما سلف وكان اللهم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر